Okay. All right, I'll call this meeting to order, 7.30 p.m. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio, result of the agenda for the regular meeting of Council dated December the 18th, 2018, be adopted as amended. All in favor? Vote is carried. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Freeze, resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of December 4th, 2018 be adopted as circulated. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, we'll move on to our delegations. And first, uh, of course, is um, Jeremy Bergen, Video Services. So I don't have anything formal on my agenda per se, but uh, I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity before a renewal for my contract is signed that uh, to allow council to offer any feedback or any suggestions for something they like might like to see with my service or if they're happy with my service, then, then uh, go with that. Councillor White? Uh, there's no way you can put a microphone in front of me so you can hear me and I can hear those guys. So you so you could hear those? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was right. Yeah. <laughs> Councilor Morio. Um, I have no complaints with the services that you're providing to us. It's actually helped me refresh my memory on some of the council meetings that we've had to go back. We've had concerns brought forward where we were accused of saying things and the video actually proved otherwise and it settled the argument versus going through there. So mm -hmm. um, I am totally appreciative and wish to continue with your services. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Gloria. Yes, I, I'm happy with everything. I've received positive feedback as far as the goal was to be more transparent and I think we've, we've achieved that to some degree. Um, but I guess, have you heard any feedback uh, that, that we may not have or that you would want to share with us as far as boy you do a good job or boy there's something boy can't hear or can't see or anything like that or I assume if you had heard that feedback you'd take that into consideration yeah and I, I, I make my own improvements there yeah. uh, just at the beginning there I you know made a few technical adjustments and and uh, made some adjustments in my workflow and I'm happy with where it is right now Those are no other questions. Thank you, uh, Jeremy, and uh, continue the, the good work. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. <coughs> we uh, have another delegation. I don't know how it missed the agenda. <coughs> if we can add, uh, we have Mr. Mazur. Okay. I'm up. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Thank you for giving some welcome. time here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Dan Major, Conservative Candidate of uh, Dauphin Swan River Deep Walk. Uh, that nomination meeting happened on November 10th, actually, uh, in Minnedosa. It was all after four nomination meetings. Um, I farmed down in the Forest Justice area, it's north of Brandon. And um, the whole reason why I became it was you know, Bob Sopak, our current MP, is retiring. Um, during the nomination process, I was, uh, I did commit to reaching out and working with all layers of government, not only the provincial MLAs, but um, especially uh, the local governments as well. I think that's a pretty important thing. Um, I was uh, president of Keystone Agriculture Producers up until July. So if you've heard my name on the radio or anything like that, that, that was me. And I did that job for four, four years. One thing I learned during that process, and during doing that job, was the importance of getting to know people, getting to know who you're representing, but working with that network. Uh, the solutions I've often said is the, it's right here in the constituency with the people you represent. So I plan on being that type of representative uh, in the constituency if you give me the honor to be your representative in Ottawa. And uh, I just thought I was up here. I'm up for tomorrow. Uh, Rick Wochuk's having an open house with Bob Sopak. And I was in town anyways, and I just asked if I could uh, introduce myself and. I have cards. I don't know if I'm allowed to leave them here with you, 
uh, but I can give them to your CAO or your, your staff. And um, yeah, that's, Thank you. that's about me. And I hope to, if there's anything going on right now, I plan on meeting everybody in the constituency in the winter time when it's quiet, for the, especially for the agriculture side. So uh, January through uh, April, if there's something you think I should be at at Swan River, by all means, please give me a call. And uh, we'll see where it works on the agenda. So we'll go from there. All right. Hmm? Questions of council. I, I thank you uh, for popping in and seeing us and, uh, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Moving on, uh, moved by Councillor Lantoni, seconded by Councillor Morio, to resolve the public hearing for application 5 2018 be now called to order at. Uh, 7.36 p.m. All in favor? <clears throat> Resolve that public hearing for application 5, 2018. Be now called to order at 7.36 p.m. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following various variation application to allow an additional one feet, seven inch from the property line instead of the four feet, zero minimum zoning requirement. Sections 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. To request, I request <coughs> that any person making re representation to the hearing state their name and their civic address. Uh, Terry Slosher. Uh, come uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Terry Slosher, president of the Swan River Elks. Uh, actually, I'm looking for some clarification on that uh, letter and blueprint you sent to the club. Um, are we talking the shed that's already existing on the property? Uh, no, it's the building. They're going to add on to the building? Yeah. Oh. Because uh, then it shouldn't be shed written on there because they're not adding a shed, they're actually adding on to their building. Yeah, that is that's true. We know that that was a uh, a misprint in our in our uh, advertisement because uh, our we own the property adjacent to the building, which is the TD parking lot, Chicken Chef parking lot, belongs to the Elks, and our club opposes it because of uh, snow removal, <coughs> adding more snow load to our property. So we're opposing the variance of giving more property. Okay. Does uh, any council have any questions? Um, with the error, do we need to amend that and, uh, and bring this forward at the next meeting? Then? We may. I have to. I have to take a look and contact the province to see exactly what's. The procedure is, but uh, we're going to obviously, if we can go through with it, we will. But how's the glory? I, I guess, um, also, when normally when we have a, a variance here, or I shouldn't say normally, but oftentimes we have a, a site plan that sh shows what the label is going to be like in the advertisement. There's a that it just shows the like the legal map, but Oftentimes we, sh we have basically what the footprint is going to look like on the site. Oh, I see. Um, and I guess uh, oftentimes there's also supporting reasoning for why they need the variance, why they can't adhere, why they can't do the expansion, but adhere to adhere to what the regulations are. So um, you know, sometimes it's an odd sized lot or something. So I guess looking for a, a, a reason why, why the variance is required would be, would be good. Uh, if we are to de delay it due to the error, that'd be good to ask the the proponent. Right. So, in light of that, uh, I don't know, Mr. Bouvier, if, if, if you need to table this, and uh, I mean, it's just that it doesn't change anything. It's just the word that describes the one building. Right? Okay. Uh, I think everybody's pretty clear sure what we're what you're talking about. Okay. I, of course, I don't see. All right, so is that everything that from you, Terry? Or, or Councillor Gray, go ahead. Well, before we get to, to 
Spanish sausage. Well, what is the the actual zoning? Uh, uh, what's the zoning? The requirement is four feet. I'm sorry. What category? Commercial. Commercial, commercial central. Okay, and and is there a reason you have a four foot wide? What's the rationale for the four foot um, side side light on, yeah, on commercial property? Zoning bylaw. Right. I mean, I know it's in the zoning bylaw. I'm just asking what the, if there's a rationale. Because how would you make the decision of whether or not to allow the variance unless you know what the rationale is? It's just because it's in the black zoning bylaw? Councilor Delore. On, on Councilor Gray's point is, how do, how do we have, this is on the, this is the side, we're burying the side yard? Yeah. How do we, like say TD Bank and Rumors are in Central Commercial and they have, they're, up, they're right up to the property line. Yeah, I would have to, you know, I. I've got to get back to you guys on these questions. I, I just don't know if I'm talking. So uh, I, have, I have further questions over here. Because I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding what the snow load. Explain to me what that means. Um, Why would there be extra snow load on your property because of the, of the building coming closer? Because of the snow roof off his roof will probably end up on our property. Um, but I'm more concerned with our renters because they pay for their own snow removal. But if the building gets closer to our property and they're pushing the snow that way and it damages that building, they're coming after our service level. They're not going to come after the renter, they're going to come after our service level because we own the property. Why would they put snow on your property? Well, it's clearing it by pushing it rather than carrying it away. Um, that we had issues last year that they were moving their snow off their property last year and putting it on ours. So you were just being good neighbors by allowing them? To we allowed them that, and then like we've had an issue this year, other than this new letter came coming in. So when but they do, the snow, when they do that, is there a problem with you not letting them put the snow on your property? Um, the thing is, like uh, last year, we were running the land to the chief. Where they're piling the snow, so it would become an issue. But the chief doesn't rent this year, so it's back to our property, and we're more worried about uh, contamination coming onto our property than anything. So, what's the problem with them with you not allowing them to put snow on your property? Because we own the property, and like we're not, they're not paying us to put snow on our property or, or dump their stuff on our property. But I'm telling you, I guess I'm, I'm suggesting that you not allow them to put snow on your we property. We told them twice last year not to, and they still did it because the person that was moving their snow didn't give it down. And we talked to the person that moved their snow last year and told them not to put it there. Okay. And they still did, so we've had issues. Okay, okay. But I'm more worried about if they're going to extend their building and then we're, somebody's pushing snow off our property and damages their building, they're going to come after us and not going to the person who's moving the snow. Great. Because there has been damage to property on commercial property just down the road here where they're pushing snow, they wrecked the fence. Yeah, I'm so, I'm just having if somebody removing snow from your property, they're not just pushing it up and leaving it there, they're, they're removing it. Some are like the TD and that, they're renting our property and right. they push the snow that way toward his building. And we're worried that they're going to get his building damaged, but you guys give him that extra two and a half feet toward the property line. Well, uh, I, I, again, I'm missing something, obviously. You're not entitled to push snow onto his property anyway, are you? Even if there's a building there or not a building there. But there's there's an eight foot, like we have a four foot variance, they have a four foot variance. Well, Am I correct? So there's an eight foot variance there on that property. But now you're shorting it to six feet. No, you, you have use of your, it's an empty yes. lot. You have use of your entire lot. You can do whatever you want with it. You can put snow there, not put snow there, yeah. have it all the way. I, I'm just having trouble figuring out what it is that you're concerned with because your the contractor needs to be told you can't put snow on the other person's property. Just as I'm, I'm, I'm particularly troubled with the fact that you say their contractors put snow on your property. That's not the way it works. You don't get to put people's snow on other people's property. That's that's just not. 
right? And I don't know, we must have a bylaw that says that, but if we don't, we will have, because that, that's just that's just not right. It's not um, the way it works. Councilor Gray, um, we have bylaws about dumping garbage in people's dumpsters that we pay the town for. And well, we've we'll had that trouble for a long time we'll too. So on, on I don't talk. Topic. Okay, you're talking about bylaws. We've had issues, about other issues. Like it's not just one, well, but this is the one we're discussing. This one is easy, though. I mean, I mean, it'll be if somebody puts snow on somebody else's property, there's a big pile of snow, that, and then an empty spot beside it where it seems to be removed. I would think prosecuting that would be the easiest thing in the world. And candidly, I, it, it, it would frustrate me to no end to know. I'm just the president. I'm just bringing the message okay. from my club. You, you also mentioned her contamination. What, contamination of what? Um, we don't know what's coming off their property on ours when they move their snow. Um, we've had things die on our property. Like after the snow is gone, yes, there's winter kill, but we've lost some that property. Like I should say, property damage, but like some of the trees have died, some of the grass has died. So we don't know what's coming onto our property. That's what we're concerned with. Okay. Any other question? All right. I'll come for it, Glory. So just looking at our zoning bylaw, I'm questioning the need for an actual variance because the, I assume you're you're getting it from uh, Table Four Slash Two, where in the CC zone you're allowed zero side yard and. That's subject to uh, to note five, where it says where a side is provided shall not be less than four feet. So if they were to extend it even further, right right now they have a, they have a side yard of four feet. They want to go a foot and a half. If they were to extend it even further, this whole meeting could have been negated. I have to discuss that with Ron. I've, I've got to look at why mm -hmm. this was done. Which, which in itself seems kind of odd because he. <coughs> So you're saying you can either have no side yard, but if you have a side yard, it has to be four feet. And to me, I guess I, I go with Councilor Gray on, on what's the, why, why do we care? I would agree with you 100%. I guess I, this was brought to me and I, mm -hmm. I did not uh, ask Ron on the reasons why. I trust that he did his job. I, I went through the variance procedure. Uh, I have to get back to you on those questions. Yes. It's, I think we have to defer. Okay, we'll have a chance to have a further discussion on that later. So, okay. thank you, um, Mr. Slosher. Then, will you change that or you do change it? Make sure you don't put down shed because that really got our guys upset because it is portable. They're going to move it, it could be moved onto our property. That's what they're more concerned with. So, we it comes to glory. Uh, are we able to deal with the resolution following the hearing? Just, just eat, either table it or. Uh, I think we've done that in the past. Yeah, just to move it on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. You can stay and watch what we do. Oh, uh, well, move by Councilor Deloria, second by Councilor Wintoni. Result, or sorry, Councilor Morio. Result at the public hearing for variation application 5, 2018, be adjourned at 7.49 p.m. All in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Okay, so then what we'll do is we will... We don't have to know that he's gone. I just thought if you... Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. Let's see what else. Okay, so moving on to uh, communications, Ag Society, liability insurance coverage. There's some information there. Counselor Deloitte. I guess this is probably uh, on the agenda due to some questions I had asked Derek um, just regarding... I, I've been hearing rumors with everything that's going on with the Egg Society as far as their, they had liability insurance through us. I just wanted to know if it affected our, our if, if there was to be a premium. claim made, our premium or anything like that, and just know the details. So, so it, they do in fact get their liability insurance through us, and it won't, if there is a claim made, it doesn't affect our premiums. That's right. Okay. And does that go for, I'm just going to, not to derail the, uh, but the library has the same question actually because they're looking at making a property claim and they were concerned about uh, increasing premiums. So I assume that this it says here that property claims or liability claims. I would assume okay. that that's correct. Okay. Is that everything, Matt? Okay. Let's move on here. Uh, next, the protective services report. 
Uh, we have a draft bylaw there. I guess we can uh, defer to Mr. Uh, Council White uh, to uh, go over that and uh, give us an update on. The, uh, well, I had the pleasure of uh, spending a couple hours with uh, the chief the other day with uh, Council Morial and Council Antoni, and uh, I feel very comfortable that the chief has done much of his homework. And if we go through the, uh, the report, there you can see the highlights where he wanted some changes. And uh, as far as I was concerned, most of them were appropriate, and all of them were appropriate after discussion. So I'm not sure whether the other councillors have anything more to add. I, I guess a concern of mine on Article 49, um, and this is always a concern of mine, and I, I sometimes question whether it's legitimate or not, but I've been burnt a number of times, not, not to, no pun intended, but uh, <laughs> with, with uh, an overzealous uh, town employee, could this, I, I would hate, I'd hate, it says no person shall let a fire of any kind, so can you not, you want to have an outdoor birthday party, you can't light birthday candles? Like, I guess it, it sounds foolish, but we've been burnt by overzealous uh, employees in the past who take take the, I just wonder if there's if there's any kind of exception or if, if common sense would prevail, but then when common sense doesn't prevail and, and it comes to us and we're dealing with a foolish issue like that, which we have in the past. So I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I'm not prepared to not vote in favor of the bylaw. But I just something doesn't quite sit right with me. I don't. I don't know if it can be addressed in any way in a in a in a further reading of the of the bylaw. Uh, Council White, then when Tony and Friesen. Yeah, as I understand it, the fire running kind of deals specifically the ones that are burning dangerous chemical dangerous hazards. This does not apply. To barbecues, to fire pits, to specific things that are in the cause in there. Right, but That's the example I use yeah. is not in is not in there. I've seen where it says about fire yeah. pits and yeah. closed things, which I have no problem with. But we've we've dealt with overzealous yeah. employees mm -hmm. who take things too literally. Yeah. I guess because I'm new, I'm not sure what the overzealous would entail. I I thought that. <laughs> And forgive me for asking because I'm not sure I want to know what the overzealous part is. But um, the reason for the permit or for that wording was to um, incorporate the new permit, the special occasions permit, um, and get rid of the <coughs> old open air permit. Um, so maybe if somebody does decide to quickly enlighten me on what the overzealous item may be, but I, I don't I don't feel that candles candles or birthday cake would be fall into that category? I would, I would hope not, but according to the words written on this paper, you could get an employee and that might take that, uh, we had, we had, you know, in not necessarily a fire department employee, but say building inspection employees who took a extreme narrow view of things. So. Council Fraser. Um, I'm going to be lighting 50 Christmas candles out at the cemetery. Is that going to be an issue? Well, you could probably get a special occasion permit. I don't think I'm going to. It's yes. free. I think it will be okay. Councilor Moria. It's free. Uh, I think an easy solution to this is that we put an amendment to in the definition of what fire means, and then just go through the document to make sure that it doesn't contradict, but just defining what fire is, and then goes from there. The, the, the the purpose of bringing it forward here tonight is the committee is bringing it forward for everybody to view it and if there's changes that are felt that need, that need to be made then that can be made and, and bring this forward uh, in the next meeting council gray am i is, is this first reading first reading it's not it's a draft it's just the, it's just bringing it forward <clears throat> so are we not doing first reading on the time i don't think we have a first reading no, the intention was to have it as a report from the committee and have it as information for when the first reading comes. Okay. There's nothing for us to do. I, I would have thought I thought it would be the first reading. I mean, is this the, generally what you would Yes. Generally, that's what you would do. With first reading is to get it on the floor. You're proposing it, right? We are. So I think this should be first reading. We've got a committee that'll go to do further, further discussions. We'll have a, a 
robust debate at second reading. I have some issues I, I have to say. Uh, for instance, I'm not much happy with a person where we delegate something to somebody and then or his designate. I, I massively prefer the definition of who the designate would be. I, I'd like to see what the alternatives were, why, what the changes is, and uh, changes are. I'm sorry, and um, fees the same thing. I, I, there's an increase in fees. I just like to know why or what the rationale is. But that we can have those questions answered for second reading. So we'll accept it for first reading, and away we go. To be, it'll be on the website. People can people can write to Councillor White and and uh, complain about all the changes, and, and we can do it. I think those reasonable questions. So, uh, being said that, can we do a first reading on it tonight without it being on the agenda, uh, as far as that, that resolution? Sorry, there's, no, there's no requirement okay. to advertise about So it. then if, if uh, the committee will bring that, that forward, then that's like Council in the I guess in, in terms of fees, um, the fees were restructured in a way um, to bring them up to standard. I think that they haven't been adjusted. I don't even know how long. Mr. Poole might have a better answer as to how long they weren't increased, but they were reflective on on today's numbers in terms of what it, the costs associated with. Well, I for one want to go on record as not being afraid of having low fees. So, <laughs> so we'll have first reading then. Yeah, that, that'll come up under the bylaws section. Okay. Okay. So then I'll um, move by Councillor Deloria, second by Councillor. Uh, Morio result that the protective okay. services report be received. Is that <laughs> oh, sorry, Councillor White. All in favor? Carry. Just getting still used to Three raising your signatures. Bylaws. <laughs> <laughs> Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White, resolved that the heavy band report for November 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White, resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Any discussion or questions to Derek? Or Mr. Poole, sorry. Councillor Moria. Um, Mr. Poole, um, last meeting you said you'd be sending out a report on the airport investigation. Are we anticipating that any time soon as to uh, there? As soon as I get time to finish it, the investigations are done. I just haven't had time to finalize the report. All in favor? It's carried. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Deloria, result of the fire chief report be received. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Deloria, result of the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Deloria, result at the management meetings uh, minutes for the be received, and you have the two there from December the sixth and December the thirteenth. Any discussion or questions to Mr. Poole? Mr. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Okay, Councillor. And CL uh, reports. We'll start with uh, Councilor Friesen. Um, okay, I had a nice conversation with uh, Lori Ann and Mo today. Just an update on uh, communities that care. 400 kids in the valley are getting gifts. Uh, the Friendship Center donated their room and helped wrap and store their gifts. They had overwhelming support from the Friendship Center. Uh, one of the Stampeder games, they received cash and presents. Um, they had 30 people to wrap all these gifts, um, and that included special Olympic kids. Hayes School, Taylor School, 
whole CBF, and they all came to help. Uh, Succeed in the high school also helped, and they did a toy drive at the fire hall and at Red Outlet. So all in all, it's been a very booming success, and Lorian um, has been the uh, driving force behind that. So I just wanted to say hats off to Lorian. Also, I stopped at the um, bus depot today. If anybody's interested, we have one bus line that comes through Swan three times a week, and we have another bus line that goes through every day. They have a schedule out there if anybody's interested in uh, coming and going by bus. There's someone there pretty much every day, all day. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Tell us more, um, I attended the uh, town Christmas party on Saturday evening, which uh, was well represented by council and our departments, along with some volunteer groups that are associated with the town, as for example, the Urban Force Committee, Fire Department, RFCP, and, and what others. So, uh, it was a good meal and uh, some good entertainment. So it was a nice little uh, evening get together to share Christmas greetings and uh, appreciate. And also, uh, did recognition for uh, past uh, Mayor Glenn McKenzie for his 30 plus years. So gift for him at that time. Um, this morning we had a meeting with the Medical Services Committee and representative from uh, PMH, the doctors, and from each of the neighboring municipalities and regarding uh, the space uh, crunch and clinic expansion dialogue. Um, lots of work to do, lots of discussions to do, which is very embryonic. And we agree we'll be looking at other things and with other options and what the situation is, and um, there'll be more information coming on that. Um, this afternoon, had an EMO uh, meeting, safety, and a briefing from our safety officer here in the town, just to bring the committee up to speed on uh, happenings for safety in the, in the town and regarding with EMO stuff, um, along with some of the um, just a quick overview of what he does at the airport. So, um, I also had a transportation and environment uh, mental and health service uh, meeting last week where we discussed a number of options and issues regarding garbage and recycling in the community. Um, there will be a formal report uh, coming to, um, to council on it with some of the suggestions and stuff like that, but uh, we'll see later on in the agenda. Um, to get some of the information that we need and to finalize some of our options. Um, there's a request to bring out an RFP for a, a garbage truck out there. So, um, other than that, that's all we got. Thank you. Council Wintone. Had a couple of meetings the, the uh, past couple of weeks. Um, an airport commission meeting that went really well, dialogue um, with that to create the appointment in chairs, sorry, um, as well as attended the grand reopening of UCN that is now turning into a workforce center uh, along Council of White, as well as a meeting with um, Rise with Mr. Mr. Gray, Councillor Gray. Um, I think that we're establishing some structure in that, in that regard, um, which is it's nice to see, I think, that the lack of structure there is, has, has been evident. Um, had another meeting this morning with Protective Services, um, or this afternoon, I guess, and then an additional one with Economic Development this afternoon, um, and then the thought of um, <coughs> rebranding and looking at a slogan is something that we will be discussing, and just to drop that in the house to give it some thought as we move forward. A um, couple of questions I have for the governance committee actually is a, within our pr procurement policy, do we have anywhere there that is stated that safety, um, safety requirements must be had by an out, out, outsource organization that needs to be checked off or in a place of allow or ensuring that 
the safety is top priority for not only the company working, but to protect ourselves as the procurement people. I'm not asking for an answer right now. I just want you to think about it, or if you want to answer it, maybe. And the second one for your committee as well is uh, just the thought of, of looking at a whistleblower policy. I'm not saying that we necessarily have to have one or just a couple of thoughts. Other than that, it's been a great couple of weeks, very busy on, on all fronts, but um, getting to know my role a little bit better and, and absorb all the meetings that we have is, is, uh, is uh, developing. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Tony, uh, Councillor Delore, do you want to respond to any of those questions or do you want to uh, do that? Um, on the whistleblower policy, there's new legislation that's been enacted that is opt in for municipalities, so it's definitely something we'll be looking at. We haven't looked at it yet. And on the safety issue, I'm sure we referenced something about adhering to all uh, employment standards, safety standards, but I'll, I'll double check that for you. And contractors that we hire have to adhere to our safety standards. We're actually looking at an entirely new procurement process, which, which has two stages. One is the um, stage of assessing the suitability of the project, which includes um, things like safety records and, and assessments of, as, as to which is the most suitable bit, um, or which are the most suitable bits, and then a comparison of price, so that we actually get what we're what we're bargaining for, which is high quality at the best possible price, not just the cheapest price. And that's, we're in the process of developing that. I expect it'll be a couple of months before we get it finally, finally tuned up. But I would, I, that will be one of the issues. I think it's in there already in the drafts that we've been looking at. And I expect it would, we might even look at it more strongly. Um, on the 6th, had a uh, general governance and finance committee meeting. Uh, we've, went over uh, some recommendations for the procedures bylaw and organizational, organizational bylaw as well as procurement bylaw. Organizational procedure are here tonight for second reading. Um, the procurement bylaw we have based, a, or we've uh, plagiarized a lot from what Brand, City of Brandon's procurement bylaw. Um, the organizational bylaw that we're gonna be presenting tonight uh, is Status quo, but we do have a lot of good ideas on restructuring it that are going to take a little bit more time. We wanted to get so we had a um, we have a few minor changes that we wanted to make tonight, but we have some some changes as far as aligning our reducing the number of committees and aligning them with the business business functions of the town, which we see there's four business functions: that services, general government, uh, recreation, and public works, and all other committees would be subcommittees off of off of those four main ones. So the, that's, I guess, just to give you a little bit of a preview of where we're heading. Um, we wanted to, I guess, streamline it a little bit, but that's going to take a little bit of time, so that'll be sometime in the new year. Um, the uh, We had a recreation meeting on Saturday the 8th, and I guess if I just speak on that, and I guess, because I know my administration is listening, um, if if there's information, if, if, if I, I think it's incumbent on administration to communicate with each other and let, you, let it, and it's incumbent on us as chairman to make sure that administration has copies of our, our agenda in a, in a timely fashion so that they can prepare properly for the meetings. But it's important for them to talk across departments, and I hope that's what they use the Thursday morning meeting to do, and say, hey, we're having our particular committee meeting coming up. Uh, is there any information I need to know, or do I need to bring in key people? That kind of thing. Um, because there was a little bit of a, a kerfuffle after that meeting as far as some information council didn't have. Um, so the, to, to be able to make a recommendation, um, we need to, the key people need to be there. Uh, and that goes for all committees, I would think. Um, but So I just hope we can uh, uh, do better in the future. And I understand completely we're short-staffed and all, and, and all that, so it's just a, a, a word of uh, advice. Um, the other thing on the 11th had a transportation and uh, environment committee meeting. Uh, as Councilor Moore alluded to, there is probably not as drastic of changes to our pickup that, that we're hoping coming, but we'll uh, 
we'll uh, be talking about that further tonight with the RFP for a garbage truck. Um, town Christmas party was excellent. Pass on our thanks to Lana for planning a wonderful event like that and uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Councillor White. I was pretty busy and everywhere I go Johnny is and he's probably at places where I'm not. So Johnny, you forgot that you had the uh, airport commission meeting which sort of happened. He mentioned that. I'm sorry. <coughs> Maybe it's my hearing. <laughs> The Community <laughs> Foundation dinner where Johnny and I represented Council the... Uh, Pardon? Councillor Wintoni. Thank you. Councillor Wintoni and I attended the Community Foundation dinner and uh, it's remarkable how much money people give to our community that goes back. No problem. Okay, it's good. Granting and helping the Valley. So I'm wondering maybe a letter from the Mayor saying to the Community Foundation, thank you guys for all you do to make the value as a whole better. And I think that we can't thank them enough. I get the same look. Uh, I went to the Stamps fundraiser dinner, and they have over half, two thirds of their team from out of province, in province. They build it in our town, they eat in our town, they go to our restaurants, and they take the message of our town to back to their respective communities. And that's a side I don't think of enough of how that promotes the Swan River Valley by having that junior hockey team here. Then I met with uh, the Animal Protection League, uh, Councillor and Tony and I, and the veterinarians are there, and some of their staff are there. So what we've asked them to do is they had concerns with our bylaws. So we asked them to take the bylaw back, you write it the way you would like it, with suggestions for the change that you might like, we'll take it back to our committee, we'll discuss it, and when we're happy with that, uh, if we are, we'll bring that to Council. Uh, what a, a caring bunch of men and women, uh, very interesting, happy with the numbers of animals. I sat in on the CAO interviews, which are always interesting, no decisions there yet. The Town of Swan River Christmas dinner was exemplary. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor and Tony, and your team for sharing that. I would hope that we'd all put our Christmas hats on and say, how can we get, you know, we have great participation, but there's some people that may not be able to make it for whatever reason. I think it's important that we communicate with those guys and those girls, say, hey, I'll come here to dinner. What can we do to encourage you to come? Because it's Christmas. We'd love to see you there because that, that, that concerns me that people aren't sharing in that happiness that we all have had able to do. Uh, I don't know, I'm losing track in the morning, so I went to Dauphin, uh, I think it was yesterday for the opening of the MRI and uh, they acknowledged that our town was represented by me, not that we had been invited or hadn't been, but we were there, so we were acknowledged. This thing is going to save our, our community people travel time, and hopefully the majority of time hotel time, Bring more money into Dauphin, take less out of us, whatever, to some degree, so that uh, MRI is, is, uh, is great for our value also, so I, I appreciate it being there. At that time, I, I had a chance to talk to the Premier and the Minister of Health about the, the CT scan, and uh, Minister Friesen seemed very receptive. He'd already met with the Mayor, and the Mayor filled his ears with all the good reasons for it, and it was also brought up to me last night that the dentists also need that, that uh, CT scan, rather. The dentists will use it nearly as much as the doctors, and we haven't had them in our equation of the meeting with the uh, dental doctor. <coughs> then we went to the UCN uh, grand reopening, rebanding, where they'll do short term training for short term jobs. And a good turnout there, uh, must have 40, 50 people there at, at that uh, meeting. So I appreciate so much what UCN does for our community. The point between the nurses and, and the heavy duty mechanics. It's a, it's a good thing for our valley and our community. Uh, the medical service team with uh, Councillor uh, Mario and myself and team, we had all representatives and I feel bad because we had all, all the chief four there and we raised that about the night before. So I, I should have let Councillor Gray because he'd have a mandate of getting us working together. But it was nice to see us all. That's our first meeting, I think, as a whole with all the G4 representatives, pretty positive. And, uh, it went well, and as alluded to earlier by Councilor Morial, the bottom line is we don't have enough space. We want surgeons in, we want anesthetists in. And equally important, they want to bring uh, resident doctors, people training, to come to our hospital, to come to our clinic to train. There's no space room in that building. They will come here to train. So uh, where that money comes from, uh, who pays for it is certainly an issue, but uh, we've made commitments with three or four of us to try to follow some possible sources. Then this afternoon with Councilor Mentoni again, we, uh, Ken Kirkpatrick, our uh, safety officer, member with us, and boy was he thorough. We have all sorts of pages on airport management, EMO management, 
And uh, he, he did a really good job, and he's organizing for the future. And he hopes to plan to help everyone around here. Counselors, that he wants to do a mock exercise soon, where we'll all be given the specific jobs in combating a hypothetical issue. And the need for that generator came up time and time again. So I would certainly think in favor of that. And he talked about the needs of the airport. So uh, it, it was very thorough. Thanks. So I appreciate that. And that last on my list, Sharps containers. I'm not sure we've gone forward on that, uh, Mr. Poole. Have we built any more sharp containers? Have we put them out? It's a, it's a pretty serious issue that I think uh, we have to get more proactive in the world. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Councillor Gray. I want to thank Councillor White, for, Councillor White for not mentioning that I was at the Community Foundation Center. Despite the fact we spent about 10 minutes together, but it's kind of... <laughs> Council, uh, Councillor Delorier raised uh, realignment, which I think is in, there is one other point and I'm, I'm not sure, but we had an open question, so it would be a debate about whether or not there's a fifth alignment, which is economic development, whether it fits under one of the other categories or it's open. We had a, actually, that was the, the largest part of the discussion. Other than that, I think there was agreement in our committee that's what we needed to do. So um, you should be ready to uh, marshal the arguments on whether or not that's an independent committee or, or part of another committee. Um, just in terms of those are the comments on other items. Um, and I expect Mr. Mary to deal with the uh, Indigenous Relations uh, Committee, then I won't uh, deal with it. Um, I, I missed, uh, because we had our presentation from our CAO candidate, the Settlement Services meeting, so I'm not sure exactly. And I have to tell you, they were not a happy group about me having missed it. But uh, we went to the Settlement Services dinner, and, and Council Treason was there, and we had a, a good time, and, and I think. Um, we we're pretty fortunate, and it, and I want to tell you that um, they had already been discussing the fact that there is a a movement by the other government departments to not have individual little silos to have more regional kinds of items, and they aggressively took it upon themselves to align themselves with Thompson, Flint, Law, Macaw, and that's already pretty much settled, so that we won't be part of necessarily the Parkland group; we will be part of a more northern which is consistent with all of our vision and on all of the way we should see ourselves. So that's the good news. And so it's a, a small little piece of what we do, uh, but it's an important piece in terms of that leadership. Um, there, are some, there are a couple of personnel issues that are going to be dealt with in Camera Trust. Uh, obviously the CAO. Um, so I'm going to move then to the two major pieces. Uh, I'm not going to go through every little committee and the attendance I have. Um, or a reissue or discussion. Um, the recreation committee met. Um, it wasn't a raving success, but we have a couple of things to report. The first is the lawsuit, which we will discuss, I think, to some extent, in the um, is separated from repairs of the pool. And we are beginning the process of getting the, an estimate of what's critical to be done and the timelines for doing things for repairs to the pool. Um, needless to say, the total budget is expected to be um, the estimates everybody here knows are in the $2 million range, and that could go up from there once we find out what's happening with some of the stuff. Um, so we need to be alert to that. But I think our committee is recommending, um, and subject to what we hear from council, um, that we forget about the lawsuit for the purpose of determining what we're going to do with the pool and make a determination. Essentially, are we going to have a pool or not? And if we are, then all of the repairs need to be dealt with over the next period of time. And whether we get money from the lawsuit or don't get money from the lawsuit is irrelevant um, because we can't have a building that has an air exchanger that doesn't work or has a, um, a hot tub that doesn't work. And those things have to be fixed at some point. Um, So we have that report coming, we expect. The other thing, and well, the other things for in camera. Um, I just want to comment on, well, I'm going to do, jump over some things because the most important piece is going to save for last on that. Um, the splash park group has wound up and is giving their money back, and so that issue is not before us 
currently. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, but it was done before we had a chance to meet. Um, the 55 plus group came and asked for a um, for us to donate effectively the uh, cost of facilities. Our position was uh, different. It was that we would not donate the cost of facilities. What we would do is two things. Firstly, if they had any loss, we would uh, waive the cost of facilities to the extent of their loss. And secondly, once they were done, the cost of facilities we are asking to segregate and contribute um, in conjunction with them and their recommendations as if we'd given it to them so that the full amount would be available for uh, local grants um, driven by that 55 plus group. Um, we have some discussions about full operations. Um, I, I think it hasn't been finally resolved. We are waiting some information for that, um, but I think it is everybody should be aware that it is likely in the very near future we're going to be looking at closing the pool for periods of time when we're effectively not functional. That is, uh, maybe Mondays, maybe during the middle of the day when there just aren't people there. Um, the, the reality is that we can't continue to just bleed money from that, and that's what it appears to us is happening. Um, we have not met with the Swan Valley, um, the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission. Um, I think it's supposed to come up, but I'm not sure exactly what. Which brings me to the last item. And this was the point. Uh, there was information about the pool that came, uh, or about the arena that came afterwards that rethought entirely. In fact, my notes are on the back of a, of a uh, resolution we were going to introduce, which we're clearly not going to, because the resolution we come up with at the committee is entirely ill considered given that new piece of information. So that's why it's important that we have that um, stuff. Um, the agreement report, I think, is already on our website or should be uh, it's been accepted by us. Um, it should be self evident to anyone who reads that that there is um, a cost to us somewhere between four and six million dollars coming if we're going to just use that, use the existing. Uh, arena, and I think we need to start a discussion about whether or not that's in our best interest. We have to look at what the short term responses are, and, and there's some good ideas that have come about. And I think our next meeting, we're going to focus on those and see if, if we can get a, somebody lined up, uh, an engineer or a consultant lined up to talk about whether or not those are viable alternatives. Um, but uh, we have a, a critical problem in that if things break, we're going to have no arena, which would be a disaster, and we have to move on some of this um, fairly quickly. Um, but whether putting four, five, six million dollars into an old building um, is a great idea, or whether we need to look at expansion of our existing facilities out um, near the pool um, is uh, an open question. I think we're going to be considering that, and you need to turn that to your attention. I know that um, our chief financial officer has a, a report coming to us that will cause us some distress because of our capital commitments, but those are things that we're going to have to consider and, and really, as we vision about what we want for the town, we really are going to need to consider <coughs> how that's going to, how the use of those facilities or lack of those facilities we don't act is going to impact us. So. Uh, I think those are going to be big issues that are going to come before council over the next several months. And they are going to uh, drive the economics of our town, the economics of our taxation, and where we want to go with the town. I want to, so which leads me into rise. And those of you who are, okay, so there's a bit of an irony that you would send to rise the two new councillors who didn't have a clue what was happening with it. And maybe it was because nobody else wanted to go, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, it was the kindest word I can think of is unstructured. Um, there were resolutions that were passed that, and, and I, you know, I, I don't want to go on past decisions, that's not what I'm talking about, but there were resolutions that were passed that set the priorities, some of which were, were just candidly considered um, 
but they were the priorities that were set by the board, and yet the reports had almost nothing to do with the priorities that had been set by the board. It was a, a little surreal, quite candidly. And and that those those priorities were passed in April, and then again in October. So our first report after them passing priorities was a report that had nothing to do with the priorities that had been passed. Uh, I think, yeah, I, you know, Councilman Matoni and I, of course, have spoken about the structure of the meeting and the structure of the organization and some of the challenges. And I, I think that we need to seriously consider whether we continue to fund RISE. Um, I don't think we should simply pull out. I'm not suggesting that at all, but I do think that we should be forthright with our partners and with the staff and say that we really need to see some tangible benefits and tangible concrete steps that lead towards a belief that we're going to have some economic development involvement um, and that we're going to do regular monitoring and whether it's a year or two years we, we have to do regular monitoring and, and we need to know what's happening and that there's something tangible coming from it. Uh, let me give you the most graphic example. The two most graphic examples. Um, the first is that for an economic development board, corporation, whatever, one would think that the most fundamental piece of being an economic development board would be determination of what it is you are offering to the world. What your inventory is, where your land is, what what assets you have, what telecommunication, telecommunications you have, all of those kind of things. You can imagine the surprise of Constable, or Constable, Consular uh, Mintoni and I when uh, after 8, 9, 10, 11, I don't even know how many years it's been done, that still hasn't been done at all. They're working on it. And go, well, I don't know, but I think maybe we should actually get that part done. That's the most fundamental part of economic development. How could you, how could you even operate until you can communicate what you have, until you know what you have, until you can? If somebody came into our valley and wanted to build something, Rise would not be able to say where there's available land, what the zoning structures are, any of that. It's uh, a little surprising, well, more than a little. And the second is endemic or is emblematic. I think is a better word of um, the challenges that we face with Rhymes is that despite the fact that one would think tourism would be a big piece of any economic development piece, that was not one of the priorities passed by the past board on two separate occasions. But more than, well, all of one person's job and more than half of another person's job was related to tourism. Uh, we have all kinds of issues with parkland tourism and whether where we fit and so on. But but and and yet that was not a priority that was established. But they were working on it, and, and so that's sort of a, a, an example. We're sort of working on it, and and whether we get to that. So I have significant reservations about rise, not because it isn't a great idea, because I think that's the, the the model is exactly what we need to do, but it has not actually been delivering what we need from it, in my view, at this point, unless I'm missing something. Um, I invite Constable Latoni to comment further on, on well, I won't, we won't comment on the meeting, but that should be left with the meeting and with, with those of us that were there. Um, there were some challenges there too, but that aside, um, that's the challenge for RISE. Um, I have nothing else to add. All right, well, thank you for your thorough report. And uh, I'm assuming that we'll probably see something as with the, uh, with the resolution of the 55 plus yeah. in perhaps a uh, future meeting. I, I, I actually thought we were going to have one here, but apparently not. <laughs> okay. So I assume it'll be at the January 2nd, or 2nd meeting. Okay. Thank you. I, I guess for myself, uh, I don't know what was discussed already. Last night, the Indigenous Relations Committee got to meet together and we, we covered off a, a lot of uh, ground. Uh, just to summarize, basically, is <clears throat> we, besides our TLE agreements that we have with Sapatoya Cree Nation uh, and moving forward with Musqui First Nations as well, uh, uh, sorry, thank you, <clears throat> we, uh, we are looking at engaging a little bit more with the First Nations. 
uh, and that included in the Swan River Valley as well as uh, the MMF as well. That we want to bring them in and uh, basically have a, a first meeting, basically just to kind of break some ground and, and see where our common interests are and how we can start to work together. And some of those things could include like uh, inviting to eventually to the G5, you know, some housing ideas that perhaps that might be covered. Rise uh, and reserve lands as far as, you know, in the uh, municipalities or our neighboring municipalities as well. Um, I believe that we even talked a little bit about the Community Development Corporation and, and what that means. And there's been a little bit of talk about that from our CFO. And I think that that might be even some of uh, the fit with with RISE as well. So um, with that, we definitely want to start to reach out to our First Nations. And, and that could also include uh, our, uh, our clinic needs. You know, we had a discussion this morning uh, about the, uh, the long-term uh, issues there with the clinic as far as, you know, they have a 6,000 square foot uh, facility there that was, you know, been in operation, I don't know, for four or five years or whatever it might be. And, and it was, I think, first designed for about five or six doctors and now they have expanded to 13 and three practitioners, nurse practitioners in the building. So they're, they're bursting at the seams. So there uh, we had a very early meeting to discuss some of the issues that are uh, coming out of that and, uh, and what the future means as far as the clinic goes. So there'll be further, further discussion with that as, um, as time goes on as, as well. Uh, and what it means with our municipality. Um, I know that everybody's been very busy and I've been hearing from you all that everybody's uh, overloaded, but I'm sure that over Christmas and New Year's you'll have a chance to have a break. Uh, Christmas supper that we had the other night, uh, uh, I congratulated uh, Camille Parker for five years of service, Troy Turton, uh, for 10 years of service with also Councillor White uh, receiving his 10 year uh, service uh, pin, Paul Klein and Ryan Willis for 15 years, and Councillor Friesen also for 15 years. And of course, uh, Cal Dahl serving with our fire department for 30 years. Incredible. Uh, he's still with our fire department doing an outstanding job of protecting our community. And of course, we honor our former mayor, uh, Glenn McKenzie. Uh, that night, and I uh, thank all members of council for doing an outstanding job. Thank you, Councillor Friesen, for taking care of the, the <coughs> and, and Councillor White, and the rest of the group for all the, the kind words to uh, to the mayor. And I also, on behalf of my family, wish you all a very Merry Christmas and the best of 2019. Well, lead up to, sorry? Relative, your worship, relative to your comments, uh, you probably thought about it already, but uh, I would think it'd be appropriate uh, to, in our communication with the First Nations communities locally, that we offer to go there as, as opposed to about bringing them here. I think it's uh, it's a show of good faith that when you go to their home and they say, hey, we got time to come back here sometime. Absolutely. Thank you. So, CEO, uh, Mr. Poole, what do you have? Oh, sorry, Councillor Gray. Um, one of the things that came up in our recreation meeting, I didn't mention it, but um, the bursting of the seams of the clinic reminded me um, is that the original plan for the air creation area is, is a wellness area, which is called wellness area, included a plan for a much larger clinic than we currently have. Uh, and um, we may want to consider whether or not that's a good plan uh, for us uh, to go forward. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That was something that was discussed earlier in that process. Um, so, Mr. Poole, do you have anything to add for uh, CAO? Uh, I guess just to summarize our priorities, uh, still working to, to get the clerk's position filled up. Uh, I've updated the, the staff on, on where everything is with the CAO, the clerks, just so that everybody's on the same page. Uh, and yeah, me and Roger are just, like I say, trying to prioritize, keep everybody on the same page, the managers, uh, me and Terry have been talking about budget and the process and leading to the eventual presentation in January. And uh, yeah, just assisting managers with, with uh, their priorities as well and the issues that are coming through my door. 
Thanks, thank you, Mr. Poole. And uh, we have a municipal advisory report, Mr. Moulier. Thank you. Uh, I provided something in writing there, and I'll just kind of uh, go over it briefly. Um, there's been a lot of issues to deal with, and uh, just get used to you know, the, uh, the operation here. I believe that uh, Derek and I have been working quite well together, getting things in order. Um, been helping out with the agenda and the meet council meeting, things like that. Uh, been quite busy with the uh, airport commission. We had our first meeting on Monday. We're having a, we had some people missing, so we're having a, a full complement tomorrow. And we're going to proceed with the full report, the financial reports, and uh, appointing the chairs and vice chairs, uh, getting organized again. We, we now have a sector treasurer appointed, get the city authorities all in place, and it can be important to get them going the way they should be operating. So that's that's going to be, a, I think, a big plus. Removing some of the stuff from from having the, the town looking after it, but the commission doing it, and I think that's probably where it should have been at. Um, so that's that's been a big part. The other one that I've been doing is doing a lot of research on the bylaws, contacting several municipalities, getting sample bylaws from other places. Got a couple of good uh, good ones coming up for the procurement bylaw. I know we gave you one. I got two more real good ones today, so I'll be passing that off to the committee. Uh, just generally busy with uh, uh, helping out as much as I can. Two and a half days goes pretty quick. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on to uh, there's no unfinished business. Uh, new business. Uh, I'll read the resolution moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Resolved that variation order application number five, 2018, by Buddy and Lady to allow a shed one feet seven inches from the property line instead of four feet zero minimum zoning requirement be approved. Discussion. Councilor Delorier. Um, I'd like to motion to table this. I think we have some outstanding questions. I think Derek, you know, you've captured what they are as far as yeah. the discrepancy with zero setback as well as are we in any sort of trouble for not identifying a shed if you could do that yeah. research and then bring it back later. Yeah, I guess just to recap, I'll be, I'll just be looking to see if we have to, to re-advertise, which may pull this into the second meeting in January, but, uh, and then of course the question on the zoning. So Okay. Councilor Gray. I was just going to second that motion to defer it. <clears throat> so then I, we have the mover and the seconder would have to agree to table? Mm -hmm. Agree. Okay. Okay, that will be... <clears throat> next we have item number... So is it going to be tabled to the next meeting or the second meeting in January? <coughs> Uh, once I find the answer on, on uh, whether we have to redo our our uh, advertising period, if that goes over January 2nd, we will have to do it in the second meeting in January. But for the motion, we need to be happy to, to table it to a specific yeah. date. If, if you don't, then you have to be advertising. Right. So, okay. So, Let's so, table it to the 18th. Yeah. Or, why, so or, or whatever the second meeting sure is. 16. 16. The mover and the second are agreed to. <coughs> Yeah. January 2nd? No. No, no I think 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. January 15. Okay. Okay, 9.2, I believe that that is left. Uh, We're not doing that. No, we don't have nothing there, so we'll move on. Uh, okay, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Dore. We're at section 163 of the Municipal Act, provides that a council may adopt an interim operating budget to have effect only until the council adopts the operating budget for the fiscal year. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following interim operating budget be adopted for the year 2019. General operating requirements, general government services, 375,000. Protective services, 750,000. Transportation services, 475,000. Environmental health services, 500,000. Public Health and Welfare Services, 95,000. Regional Planning and Development, 20,000. Resource Conservation and Industrial Development, 55,000. Recreation and Cultural Services, 750,000. Fiscal Services, 250,000. And Water and service, Sewer Services, 750,000. Discussion. All in favor? 
Well, I would have liked to have seen what the numbers were and why they were in advance, not just have them read. But uh, I'm not going to vote against it. But I'm, I, I don't know how I would make an intelligent decision without the information in advance. Do I, uh, I don't know if those are appropriate. So you were looking for the numbers of what they were the previous year? Or? Oh, well, okay, I've made this point before. I, I think we need to start our budgeting process much earlier so that we have a final budget before the end of the year. But but that part of it, it just if we were going to pass a resolution, I'd like to know the numbers in advance and I'd like to know the rationale for them. Then I can make an intelligent decision. All I'm being asked to do is rubber stamp some. And, I have her beliefs and believe that those are accurate numbers of what we'll need, but I, I'm not comfortable going on something I don't know the basis for it, and so I'm going to abstain. But I'm not, I'm not against it. I think we obviously have to have an operating budget. I just, <coughs> I would prefer to have had the numbers to us as opposed to just a resolution out of the blue. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I see that number that was added again, please? Against and abstain. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that the municipal advisory agreement be approved as per Schedule A. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Morial, resolved that the non union employee wages be adjusted as per negotiated agreement. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. I'll read the resolution. Uh, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor uh, Gray. Whereas the Association of Manitoba Municipalities has provided Council with an opportunity to have a member of Town of Swan River sit on the Manitoba Provincial Municipal Justice Advisory Committee. And whereas this appointment would be a great opportunity for the Town of Swan River to be represented on this provincial committee and provide input from the community on policing and public safety issues. Whereas the municipal appointee may participate in this committee by teleconference. So therefore be resolved that council appoint one of our members of council to this committee. I did send out an invite because I felt that it was important for each of you to have an opportunity to uh, request to be on the committee. I received one uh, actually uh, asked to be on the committee by letter to that response, and that's uh, Council Morio. So if anybody else is interested, we can appoint Council Morio. Okay. Question, Council no, White. I vote. I agree. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Carry. Another committee for you. <laughs> <laughs> Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Gray, resolved that the CAO sign the pending agreement between the town of Swan River and Swan Valley Veterinarian Clinic in regards to the handling of stray animals. Discussion. Councillor White. I was of the opinion that uh, they were going to get a proposal to us relative to their bylaw, with, with including their suggestions of why they wanted things to change if they were to change. That, sorry. That, that's the message I was left with. So I'm a little uncomfortable approving this till I, till I see what they want changed. No, that, that was regarding separate issues. So oh. this, this was one of the issues that was brought up prior to those issues, is that we at the Town of Swan River never had an actual written, signed written agreement with what we do with our stray cats. We've, we've, we've had this agreement in our files for years. Okay, I know. Is that just the cats? Yeah. The cats and dogs, sorry. And uh, it's, it was just never signed, so we got to get this yep. into a formality. But no rates change or anything. It's the same agreement we've had in the operating on correct orally we just now have it right that's right council delore on article three is it the regulation that the animals uh that are to dispose of them must be taken to winnipeg for cremation or is there is there a, a local or cheaper <coughs> method of of disposing them of them like 
Uh, I know that question has come up, and they say they must be taken. They must. Yeah. There used to be a Council place in, in Dauphin where they used to, but they no longer do it, so that's the only place that they must. You're still on Council Morio. Yeah. Um, also, looking at this agreement, I find that uh, Article 1 and 3 contradict each other. Where you look at Article 1, that uh, uh, for a period of no more than three business days after which animals will be put up for adoption if deemed adoptable by the Swan Valley Animal Protection League, and at which time the town will no longer be responsible for the dogs and or cats. Uh, in Article 3, it says after the th three days, uh, the animal will be euthanized um, for set prices. And at the meeting, they also said that they uh, will not euthanize an animal unless there's specific reason for it. Extreme case. Right. So there's there's some issues with, with them there. Like after three days, it's like if we're not responsible for them, why are we paying for the euthanization if the way the, the wording is? I guess the the way I've that I interpret this is uh, like the Animal Protection League would be responsible once it's theirs, right? If it's not euthanized. Well, it's Article One says after three days it's not our problem anymore. It doesn't say what happens with the animal, but then after three days in Article Three it says it's euthanized if it's not deemed adoptable. Councilor yeah. Wintonic. Article 3 does say that if it's not returned to the owner uh, after the three business days <clears throat> and deemed unadoptable. So that's not necessarily, but I, I mean, I guess in a way it's a stray, but it's the one that belongs. I'm not sure how you determine that, but. Yeah, it's, it's talking about two different classes of animals. Okay. Yeah. Number one yeah, talks about an, animals that are adoptable. And right. what happens to them in number two because of the end is the ones that are unadoptable. I get to know. So I'll call for the question. All in favor? Councillor Gray, go ahead. Um, when we get to doing the bylaws and when we get to doing the uh, reviewing that agreement, um, I just direct your attention to the Animal Care Act which is CCSM CA84, which provides very specific structures for destruction or passing out of animal, uh, uh, transferring of animals. So I'm not, uh, I'm not at all comfortable that, although that's our bylaw, that's the agreement we've been operating under, and I'm going to vote in favor of it. I have to say that in another municipality, I'm going to vote to take action against somebody who arbitrarily gave out somebody else's animal when they knew who it was. Because um, there's very clear provisions under that act as to what you're supposed to do. And I don't think we get to just sim simply circumvent provincial law. But uh, I direct your attention to that act yeah. and the, that committee to that act for them to understand what it does. And it's in particular section sections um, um, 6 through um, 12, I guess. Maybe 13. You've got it written down, uh, Mr. Poole? I do. Will you forward that to the committee? Yes. Thank you. So are, are we saying oh, that... 15, 16, yes. Does, does council feel that this needs to be tabled to... No. Uh, to make no. Some changes no, I think or? this is the agreement we've been operating under, so we it's better to have it in writing so everybody knows what's going on. But sure. I just think when we do the new agreement and when you do the new bylaws, I want to direct their attention. I just didn't want to leave it. And then when the new bylaw comes, says, oh, by the way, I knew about this act, and I forgot to tell you. I'm just letting you know that that, sat, that act needs to be looked at, and you need to blend in that act to the new bylaw and to the new agreements. Fair enough. Councillor Tony. I, I agree with Councillor Gray, and, and I feel that this is, we've been operating with this agreement currently um, without a signed Without it being signed, I think that we need to sign it to ensure that we have something in place. Having said that, when we do create our new bylaws, I am sure that this one will be uh, perhaps tweaked or revamped in the way to suit the new bylaws and the 
agreements that are in place, but I, I strongly feel that this sh needs to be in place currently. Okay. All in favor? Let's carry. Oh, I need to move on this one here. <coughs> We do 9.5 already. Yeah, we did 9.5 already. Okay, okay, moved by Councillor with Tony, second by Councillor Delorier. Whereas FCM is a strong advocate of municipalities on a federal level, including gains like the federal gas tax fund and the GST rebate. And whereas FCM provides municipalities with resources and programs such as grant availability, assistance with asset management plans, and rollout of, roll of cannabis legislation, etc. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River joined the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for 2019 and 2020. Discussion. What is the cost for that? $805. Council Morio? This is the same um, organization that we opted out for the last two years um, for the cost of the, the, uh, the membership. There's no adverse effect to us getting our gas tax money or anything that we're aware of from the federal uh, government or provincial. So in my mind, it's spending $850 to be part of a, an organization that we still get the same benefits without that expense. Just to, except for, I guess the, the one benefit that I see that is, that is it's on our short term list is, is the asset management plan. I guess it, it, does, it does hinge on the fact that the province needs to, to send out their, their mandates for asset, for, for what municipalities are gonna have in their asset management plan. If that comes, the FCM, provides basically grants for us to, to hire a consultant to get it done, hire an accountant, basically so help now us. So now there would be a benefit. Yes, there would be added benefits for sure. For the discussion? I just want to say that uh, I think uh, FCM is an advocacy group. Um, and I think if we're going to get the benefit of the advocacy, we should pay our share. Enough. All in favor? Carry. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor 120, second by Councillor Gloria, resolved that the Superintendent of Works be authorized to prepare requests for quotation documents for replacement garbage truck. Discussion. I would think that the chair. Our story chairs here. Yeah. I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Councillor uh, Gloria. Let you go first. Um, were this this uh, resolution to authorize you to prepare? What when do you when are you planning on sending it out? I guess. So. Uh, we would. I guess over Christmas it would be okay. as soon as possible. Like Darren's working on it already, talking to mechanics. So that leads to my second question. As far as there was a a. Uh, a couple of other uh, uh, parties that you were going to speak to regarding uh, proposals they may have. Um, have you had a chance to speak with them prior to sending this out? And, or if you haven't, will you have a chance to speak with, to them? The plan is to speak to them and get that information before this goes out. Okay. But that hasn't been done. Okay. Yeah. Can you uh, let the committee know the the fruits of, of your discussions with them prior to sending this out? Yeah. Okay. Councilor Morio, do you have anything to add? Okay, so the basis of this uh, resolution of, uh, for the request is to prepare a request for quotations. The committee met um, with the, Mr. Kuhl and his assistant, Mr. Harvey, uh, regarding garbage collection and recycling in the community, um, where they presented um, options, the numbers, and was analyzed a number of times over a number of meetings and stuff like that, where we looked at, uh, do we continue with our status quo? Um, do we contract out to a third party garbage collection, including just residential or commercial garbage or recycling and stuff like that? Um, but with a very hard look at the numbers, um, 
everything becomes out more expensive by contracting out or putting other tender than actually doing the work ourselves. Um, so we've come up with, um, it was advised to us and it was debated at length and stuff like that as to what we need to do and what type of truck we would need if we move forward. Um, so basically we came to an agreement that we would purchase a very a similar truck to what we got right now, but have the options that we can switch to um, instead of like regular garbage cans, have an addition to it um, based on cost and a further proposal down the road to have it able to pick up the residential garbage bins that you see that normally will with, with an arm, um, but it still allows us to have the ability to pick up the commercial garbage and uh, with the existing bins that we have. Um, there were some big, big uh, challenges with that that we couldn't address without causing the commercial industry significant costs and potential blowback. So um, we're looking at a proposal here that will be, depending on the, the results of this RFQ, um, to bring forward where we can do things but transition slowly to new methods of collecting garbage um, while look, keeping, I should say, um, being very cognizant of our capital purchases and the length it goes um, for the best value of the vehicle that we would have instead of. Okay, Councillor Glory and then Councillor Gray. I guess I just want to clarify for, for Council the equipment we're going out for quotation on is similar to what we have now. It's not the one armed bandit that we're familiar with seeing. The problem with that our committee is looking at is unless we can either sub out or, or drop, and this is what Dauphin had to do, they had to drop commercial pickup. The city doesn't do commercial pickup. Unless we can drop commercial pickup, it does not pay for us to go to the one-armed bandit because it cannot pick up our dumpsters. Um, the So the truck we, we are quoting on right now is, is the rear load like we have now. What we are at, what we are looking at doing though is, and this, this won't save us manpower as far as on the on the route itself, but it may it may limit the number of pickups, meaning that we could go to two uh, once every two week pickup. Um, it will have the ability to load the wheelie bins from behind with it with a uh, an assist arm, but it, it won't it won't eliminate the people needed to be out outside of the truck. So that's just so council is completely clear on that because I know there's probably some expectation that we'd be going to the one arm bandit style of truck. Um, uh, that's so unless we're willing to drop commercial cardboard or commercial uh, commercial garbage pickup, then this is what we're looking at. Um, it, but it will allowing it to, to pick up the wheelie bins will allow people larger to hold larger amounts of garbage, which which will allow us to go to once every two week pickup, which is which is in line with what many uh, other municipalities across the province do. Councilor Gray. Is this anything to do with the recycling thing? <sighs> sort of. I, 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 this truck is solely a garbage truck. So it's nothing to do with the garbage, with the problems we've had with recycling? At this point, we're not addressing any of the recycling issues with this truck. So this truck is just about garbage collection? Yes. yes. It's not about recycling at all? No. no but a, what, some of the options we were looking at was parting out all, all recycling and garbage pickup completely, but the cost just didn't work out in our favor. Okay. Because it, it, I have some concerns about the recycling, at least from what I've heard. And, which brings me to my, I'm going to do my other whiny thing first. Okay. The um, superintendent of public works at this point is Mr. Harvey. He is not Mr. Poole's assistant. He's the superintendent of public works, Mr. Who's the CAO? But I'm uncomfortable with this again. I'm uncomfortable for two reasons. Firstly, I'd like to see the documents. I'd like to know what we're talking about. I feel really uncomfortable simply approving things, rubber stamping them. And secondly, um, uh, we know a memo is coming. Now, maybe we have to address it, but we know a memo is coming from our chief plant officer with respect to um, capital stresses. And I know that there are, and some of you know, there are two huge projects coming from 
uh, creation, and there are other projects that are going forward. I'm uncomfortable approving things unless it's an emergent uh, emergency um, without a buy without a budget and without a capital budget. I, I it's not the way I'd like to do business, and so I'm again uncomfortable, just as I was before, with not having the documents. And I'm uncomfortable with not having the budget. Yeah, council white thing, council. So at the moment we pick up garbage once a week. Yes. So now we'll pick it up once every two weeks. No, we're not changing that right now. But this, but this will will possibly allow us to look at that. You know, the consequence of that, in my mind, that's take me for example. I use two garbage cans a week, mm -hmm. and I get picked up once a week, and it works out wonderfully. Now, however, if if it's going to do it every two weeks. My cans, I'm going to be in trouble. You're not using your cans anymore. You're going to be using the wheelie bin, the big oh, wheelie okay. bins. Okay, and there'll be enough room in them. For they're, 90, they're 96 liters. Okay, as long as have enough room, because I have to feed my wife. <laughs> okay, thank Councilor you. That part. I guess just to, uh, uh, <clears throat> for Councillor Gray, um, can we give him access to, to our committee documents? I, I guess I'm looking at yes. Derek, if you can give, maybe give all of council access to the T&E, if that's okay with the chairman. Yeah, um, I got them up there. Yet. And he can, he can look at the documents for himself. Um, I guess the, I want to say the rush, because there, there isn't a, a huge rush, but there is somewhat of a, of a timeline as far as uh, we need, this decision to, to purchase a garbage truck was pushed at back a year and a half ago for, for this analysis to be done. We've spent the last year or so doing the, this analysis on this. Uh, it was actually, it was scheduled to be purchased, I believe in 2017, 16. 16. So we pushed it back. Um, we've incurred roughly uh, $12,000 average, roughly, I think those are the numbers. 12, 000, since, 12, since 2014, 59,000, Just parts, so you, labor is probably, brings us into six figures on this, on this garbage truck. Um, our heavy use piece and we've had three times in the in 2018 where we had where we both the main garbage truck and the backup garbage truck were unavailable and we were picking up garbage with a, a loader which is you 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 can't get it done at those speeds so and the timeline on receiving garbage truck from date of order is about six months so if we get quotations come to the process of council here we put in the order in end of february probably somewhere in there we're not we're not looking at receiving it till till fall time. So we have a whole another year, almost eight months of repairs still to go on this. So, like I said, I, I, if there's a, an emergent purpose, I I'm not going to be a stick in the mud. I just it's not the process. So I guess for in the in the future things like this, we can we can just simply add the committee's information to council when we. Mm -hmm. That'll be that'll be fair, yeah. But should cause it delay. And I, I guess one one other thing, uh, I I understand that you that you, we've been made aware of of the impending report from the CFO. But one place where we are probably strong as far as reserves and planning is on re replacement of of public works equipment. Uh, Derek, I I don't know if Councilor Gray's seen your plan, but he, he Derek has about a a twenty year turnaround on his plan, and it's fully funded. It's almost fully funded for the for the whole period based on the contributions and the increases to contributions uh, that Derek's proposed going forward. So if there's one spot where, where we one shining light, it's in our public works plan. That would be incredibly helpful information to have for the decision. <laughs> Councilman Tony, I have one question. And you were talking about dropping commercial garbage. Did you look at the costs versus um, um, perhaps dropping or hiring out residential to a third party and mm -hmm. continuing with commercial. <clears throat> Whereas we have the infrastructure for our commercial currently, all of our dumpsters, did you look at the option of just, just looking at, at uh, you know, keeping our, our trucks and our crews just to look after commercial garbage, that's it. What is man hours versus on, on that? <coughs> Well, I can't answer that question or, or, like to the penny, but uh, it there there is no scenario other than what we're doing that is cheaper. We'd be doing it already. We've been we've been beating this for four years now, 
And uh, if there was a cheaper option, including just residential recycling, switching that out only, we, we would have switched that already. We would have recommended it and done it. But the cheapest way to do this with all the services that we're providing are the way we're doing it right now. So then my other piece of the, uh, my other question is, if we're looking at a truck that can handle the uh, retrofitting a truck further down the line, that this current truck to the bins that require the same amount of, of manpower, why would we even want to go down that, that route? It, it'll increase capacity that people are able to store in their house for one, and we're hoping it would, would there be some trials, but there, we were hoping that it would make the routes faster and we can compress, compress the amount of time that it takes to pick up garbage and compress it within a week and only do it once a week. Or what, what, once, once every two weeks. weeks. Two and a half days every four, 10 working days. <clears throat> and then uh, even with the, uh, if we just stuck with the commercial garbage pickup, we're still stuck with the fact that we need to buy a truck to actually do it. Because the one right now is not fit to be the primary truck. No. no, and with an unreliable backup, uh, you have breakdowns like we've had, and as soon as you, one truck breaks down, recycling is over. It cannot pick up the commercial cardboard. They try with a half ton, but it just doesn't work. So I, I guess on your point, as far as only doing commercial, we could look at that in further detail, but we need, like Councilor Murray says, we need the truck, even if that is the route we go, we need the new truck to do that anyways. But I guess you'd be looking at just a specific plane truck versus the one that is has the capabilities of lift arms, etc. right? The the quotation Derek is going to get is for the plane truck with the add-on arms so we see the breakdown in price and we can make that decision once we right. receive the quotes. Yeah, the add-on arms is an addition to the truck, yeah, okay. an attachment. And that doesn't necessarily need to be bought at this time, that add-on right. arm that can be bought so right just so that we're clear going forward when we have these kind of things in the future we're going to have the background material and we're going to have the costing out done for us so that we're because that's cool and tony and i and all of we agree all of our materials so all of this could have would have been addressed i think and we would have more focused questions yeah and, and, and i think that you're right you know in the future that make sure that the committee Make sure that the rest of the council has a chance to look at what you see. There was some comments. I, I, I didn't see, I wasn't at the whole committee and, uh, meeting, but I, I did hear the discussion and, and there was a lot of information. And, and I think that even Councillor Deloria had mentioned, says, you know, like, there's a lot of information here to absorb. And it's, it's too bad that it's, the rest of council is not here to, to see this or hear the presentation as well, because this is not been just going on for the last you know two months it has been an ongoing thing for the last four years and they've been kicking the, the, that can down the road and looking at alternatives and, and and i have to say being sitting on one of those committees in the past it was surprising because i really thought that we'd have other better options as far as cost savings options go but it just didn't come to that so any further discussion all in favor Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray, result of the Town of Swan River provide the arm of Livingston, Saskatchewan, with the required six months' notice to cancel said fire service agreement. Discussion? Councillor White, do you have anything to add? Uh, I guess the bottom line that one, it hasn't been called on, and two, uh, it, they're getting far more business in town as we've expanded our writings, our, our perimeter. So they don't feel uh, they can do it. Councilor Dore. So if we have, and we have had very little calls there, and I understand we, we, we're our agreement is a paper call method. Um, have we looked at the uh, treating fire protection as an insurance method of payment with them? Then, then we would receive we would receive payment for I'm not, I'm not doing that. that. So is that there. something we would want to look at? If if it's not if it's not it was why well, I, I correct me wrong. I suspect it was a concern of being out of our service area. If anything happened in other areas, which are now significantly larger than they were in the past, they were sure they could. They wanted to send the manpower away. Councilor Morion. Yes. The, the further that, like the, 
there was a number of issues with the, especially with the agreement that uh, with shared services with Minnetota Bozeman and now us being the primary call for the Birch, uh, or pardon me, the Bozeman area. Um, when this agreement was first made, we didn't have that as the primary. Now we are primarily covering that whole geographic area. So to the northeast of the community of Swan River, our primary response area as first call in there is significantly increased. Um, second issue with, was that is once they cross the border, everything has to be um, like all the reports, paperwork, all that stuff, file regulations are all Saskatchewan, which is totally different than Manitoba. So there'd be a whole significant issue um, there, um, which I believe he said it could open us up to some, um, there could be some issues and errors made and stuff like that, especially because uh, they're not, it's not dealing with not Saskatchewan regulations on a day-to-day -day basis like in Manitoba. So there could be issues there um, with it and stuff like that. But uh, the primary is, is that going across the border, it's a significant distance um, to send resources out there. And then all of a sudden now we're short of resources within the community. For the, uh, I know I'm the second. I, I know I'm the second year, but um, have we had discussions with the Arm of Livingston about this, or are we just going to send them a notice as the first thing to hear about it? Uh, Protective yeah. Service Committee. The chief yeah. hasn't indicated that he's talked to them, so yeah. I just brought that forward. And I'd, I'd be much more comfortable if we talked to them in advance and, and made sure that. Um, you re do you remember there was a. Uh, where do they go if they don't? Well, get out? yeah, do you remember there was a huge fight in the Interlake about five years ago when one municipality simply cancelled another municipality's fire coverage without any notice? Ooh. And everybody went, well, with six months notice, but said we're not going there for the next six months anyway because you have to pay your bills. And so we're not going there. And when and in the end of six months, it's all going to be done. And there was a huge blowback from everybody. Uh, I don't think we want to be that guy. I think we want to start with a conversation with. The arm of Luke's and before we send them the notice, and um, so I think we should defer. To, I'm going to move to defer this till January second, okay. um, so that that can happen. Does the mover and second agree to that? I'm going to put it up a little. You did. Yeah. Thank you. So this will be. I am second, so I. <laughs> I'm moving to this. To January the second. So, and then we'll have uh, the committee discuss that with the fire chief. Yeah. What we, what we want to do is have a discussion with our own to make sure that we're right. not sort of leaving them stranded, mm -hmm. firstly. Mm -hmm. and, and secondly, um, we want to see the documentation again so that we know for sure that that what the issues are. So if somebody says to me, well, you know, because we have people who live in town whose parents live in the Arnold of Livingston. My parents' house burned down and you guys wouldn't come to help up with you guys. And, and I'm going to go, I don't know, I just voted for it. Right. Um, Councilor Morial. I know that the, the fire chief did mention that looking at the, the map, like where the populations are, like we're yeah. building, there is fire protection from a closer community. Like yeah, we are so. closer to, to open land, like for grass fires and stuff like that, but for structure fires, they would probably be better served by a closer community from on the Saskatchewan side, but you can definitely have that have the direct fire chief to have that discussion with one of these three. Okay, I think that's only fair. <clears throat> okay, moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Deloria. Resolve that resolve that bylaw number nine, two thousand eighteen, on the organizational bylaw be read a second time. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw number two thousand number 10, 2018, procedure bylaw, be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that the bylaw number 11, 2018, the Council indemnity, be read a first time. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, oh. Councillor Morio, sorry. Um, the value that they're putting there, I just want to confirm that that's the current value that we're getting in Article 2 for 2018. It is. It is. Those are the current values. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Gray? Well, 
I'm missing something. I just want you to damn me, I'm missing something. Um, that's what we're currently getting, but previously there was an allowance. Wasn't the intention that we were going to increase these to uh, be in the same position as we were before? Uh, that's this is the first reading on this, so like it, it can be changed. That's no, no, I, I realize that. I, I just think if again we want to publish our bylaws so that people know what we're doing, um, and so for me, I, I the amount that's different times a new tax rate, I suppose, but the amount that's different is about 25 percent mm -hmm. of, uh, of the. Well, no, it's a third, and um, it's fifty-two percent of that. So whatever that is, it's a sixth, I guess. So shouldn't we be increasing the indemnities by about eighteen percent to make up that difference? Isn't that the the number more? I, I guess we were looking for the wish of council. Yeah, the idea yes. of putting first reading with a document is something that you have in front of you. Right. And tonight you can, if you told us that, like if, if that's what council wishes, second reading would be with those numbers in it. Okay. I would have the financial CFO make that calculation. Uh, you want to get your net the same, right? Right. Yeah. All, what I'm, what all I wanted to do is when we publish it on the website, I want it, a big bold note that's saying that the indemnities here are going to be in all probability increased to reflect the fact that there are that, that the uh, income tax act has been amended and that the result is that that the net sum will be the same but that these gross amounts will be different right right but i just want i don't, don't want anyone to read it go okay well it's the same as last year no one cares and then six months from now somebody says you guys gave yourself a 20 percent increase what the hell are you doing and, and without anybody knowing why we're doing it and without it being given notice, I, I, I agree with you. I don't. It doesn't matter about the first reading. It matters about notice. Right. But with this bylaw, this is about a twenty-five percent increase. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Council Morio. That's so exactly like I, I respect Councilor Gray's uh, opinion. Um, if that's what he wants to put forward and stuff like that, my personal view on this, as for looking Councilor's direction, is I'm willing to eat that twenty-five percent and leave the net whatever the difference is so we can debate that after second reading and stuff right. like that so um we're good to be okay we'll see where we're at further discussion all in favor it's carried move by councillor De oh, uh, <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Delorde, second by Councillor Wintoni, resolved that the accounts of the Spalls be hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check number 23548 to number 23646 for a total of $235,672.79. Payroll accounts from check number 4357 to 4362 for a total of $103,470.50. Discussion? Council Morio. Um, on check number go two three five seven seven. Um, just question: Is that work that has to be contracted out, or is that stuff that we can do ourselves at a lower cost? Uh, no, that was to remove the contaminated soil, uh, and also to assist in burn building with that material. So that was excavators to. To remove the contaminated soil. Okay, so it's work that we could not do ourselves. Correct. Okay. So. Okay. For the discussion, all Councillor Gray. Um, I just want to note the amount that we paid for legal fees. Thirteen thousand. There's actually another payment somewhere on the thing here. I saw, and just note it. I think it's an incredibly high amount. What was that for profit? Thirteen thousand dollars for legal fees, just from Taylor McCaffrey. Uh, what's your question? I'm just, there's no question. I'm just noting that that's a high amount, and we have to be cognizant that you know there's actually another amount in here for lawyers. I didn't 
to see it, but maybe it's in a different room. Thing. No, here it is, Town Cabin 1200. So it was $15,000 just over the last couple of months in legal fees. Never mind the fees with respect to the lawsuit, which has another component. So I just alert council to the fact that that's a huge amount and we need to think about that and we need to consider that throughout the procurement process. Uh, I guess would it be wise to have the CFO kind of keep us up to date as well? Yes. Yeah. Numbers looking like for each of those items. Yes. No, but I guess that'll be also something when we need to, when we do need to contact to them. Is there really a need to justify the cost versus? No, what we needed to do, like, like don't get me wrong, but we needed to, we need to legal counsel. I just, I, I just when we go through the procurement process, I just want us to be cognizant of how much this is going to cost so that. Again, we have the council who we use. Maybe she isn't comfortable, and we need to consider. And we've all had different thoughts about um, council that we had on that. So we should consider that in our procurement. That's all I'm mentioning. The, the expenditure is fine. We, we had to have the expenditure. I'm not criticizing the expenditure. I'm drawing people's attention to the fact that there's $15,000 just in that. And then there's the other. Okay, further discussion? Check number 23599, Neptune Technology. I realize that it's annual hardware software maintenance meters. What was that referred to? <coughs> That's our water billing okay. software. So they come in and, and uh, basically do maintenance on their software. Our readers, we read through radio now. It's all done through computers. We did, I mean, we even here with some training as well. And that's an annual fee, fee we pay in that amount, or is that one? No, this won't be the the annual fee. There's training involved in here, which involved bringing somebody to Swan River. Okay, thank you. For the discussion, all favor? It's carried. I gotta go back uh, to bylaws. I missed one here that we had added, so it'd be ten point four. Uh, moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White, dissolve that bylaw for 2018 to repeal bylaw number 15, 2016, a bylaw to establish and operate an emergency fire fighting service for fire prevention, for the related regulation of fire and other hazards, and for the adoption of the fire code be read a first time. Should be and an act after. Repeal, or should be the words and an act. What we're doing is repealing the previous one and enacting. Oh, I'm sorry, and an act. I'm sorry, you are right. I was like, I didn't, I thought those were initials or something. I didn't know when, when that was. And so I, an I appreciate that. I correct that. So repeal bylaw 2015 2016 uh, and, and an act. Okay. Discussion. Councilor Morio. We. So further to that, we didn't enact a new bylaw then, yet. So, so we can repeal the other one. No, this this bylaw, the bylaw is firstly to repeal the previous one and to enact a new one. Yeah, we're not we're not we we are not repealing it by passing this. We're reading this bill, and the bill is going to have to be changed. To we, we first line will be we we repeal. Bylaw number such and such, and subsidy in place. This bylaw. On third reading. That's on third reading. That's okay. that's the usual. Because yeah, that's form. what I'm getting at. Because yeah. we didn't. We don't have nothing. We repeal it. We don't have nothing to put in the place right. right now. We're not repealing it now. Right. It's, it's part of the bill. So why are we doing this resolution then? That same. It's not a resolution. It's it's a, in a, a bylaw. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I don't. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Mike's is a little slow tonight. No, it's all good. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Pulls is carried. One word changes the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Moved by Councillor Doria, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that the financial plan for the year 2018 included a withdrawal from the employee benefits reserve in the amount of $44,318. Therefore, be it resolved that the lesser of $44,318 or the total expense resulting from the increase in the estimated pre-retirement bonus entitlement liability from December 31st, 2017 
to December 31st, 2018, be transferred from the Employee Benefits Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Discussion. All in favor? <laughs> we have two of them. It was hard to read. <clears throat> That's our Chief Financial Officer saying that He's transferred our, our budget both. says this is what we're going to transfer, but if it comes in lower, he wants only to transfer the lower amount. Yeah, I got it. It's Moved by Councilor Morial, second by Councilor Fries, and whereas the capital budget for the year 2018 included forty thousand dollars for sidewalk sidewalks to be borne by Federal Gas Tax Reserve, and such sidewalks have been installed at a cost of twelve thousand six hundred and forty six and thirty three cents. <clears throat> Therefore, be it resolved that twelve thousand six hundred and forty six dollars and thirty three cents be transferred from the Federal Gas Tax Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. I'm going to lose my voice, but it's up. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Memorial, second by Councillor Wintoni. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2018 included $352,000 for water plant distribution pump to be borne by water and sewer reserve. And whereas costs we recorded to date for the project in the 2018 fiscal year, total $246,208.48. Therefore, be it resolved that the lesser of $352,000 were the final uh, total cost of the project incurred in the 2018 fiscal year be transferred from the Water and Sewer Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. Do you want to read something? Yeah. <laughs> Moved by Councilor <laughs> Fries and seconded by Councilor Morial. Result: Whereas the 2018 financial plan for the utility operating fund included $498,030 transferred to the utility reserve, be be it hereby resolved that the lesser of $498,030 or the utility operating fund net operating surplus for the 2018 fiscal year be transferred from the Utility Operating Fund to the Water Sewer Reserve Fund. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Morial, resolved that the assessment alter alterations amendments as listed by the Manitoba Municipal Relations Assessment Services dated September the 24th, 2018 be made to the 2018 property tax roll under the authority of sections 306 and 326 of the Municipal Act. Oh, oh sorry, Councillor Gray. Why are the change? Like, like, are they improved valuations? What's going on? I, I, I'm not getting. Like, okay, so if you read the letter, it says it may be because of one or more of the following. Change of ownership, change of physical condition, change of classification, improvement, subdivision, uh, because it was not previously assessed. Should we? Like, I, I, go ahead. Oh, Maybe I'm missing something. Okay. Uh, on the attachment to it, it shows all the properties and the present and uh, revised list. So it will show the roll number, what the assessment was before, and it will also. Oh, I see those match up to the Yes, and thing. it says what for had a new garage, a new apartment building. Oh, so that's okay. the reason for that. I didn't, I didn't keep scrolling. That's my problem. Yeah, he sends a tax bill to all these people Perfect. for those changes. I'm, I'm good. Thanks for the, the time out for my voice. <laughs> well, <laughs> sir, that's my intention. <laughs> all, all in favor? It's carried. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that the financial statements for the 10 months ended October 31st, 2018, be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that pursuant to Section 152 3 of the Municipal Act Council going to the committee and close the meeting to the public to discuss the following matters, matters recreation legal matter, employee update for council, clerk, CAO, and personnel. All in favor? It's carried.